Hey, hey everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from many places <laughs> because I have three very special guests. I'm going to let them introduce yourself, introduce themselves. And uh, this is kind of a, a Sunday evening for you gentlemen. So thank you so much for taking the time out on your Sunday evening. So I'm going to just start from my left and go right. So the first person, I'm sure, doesn't require any introduction, but there you go, DM. Give us your introduction. <laughs> Um, I go by DM Logic online. My channel is uh, DM Logic's XR Philosophy on YouTube, and I am at Logic DM on Twitter. Super. All right. And right next to DM Logic is Jungle. Oh, not on my screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Jungle Link. <laughs> Uh, I think my YouTube is just some random numbers because I haven't been able to figure out how to switch that. But you can just look me up with Jungle Link, and I'm an XRP enthusiast. Very good. And next to Jungle, we have Tony. Go ahead, Hey, everybody. Tony. I'm Tony. Uh, my channel is Thinking Crypto. I hold a variety of crypto, but I'm most bullish on XRP. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so for today's gathering of i'm i'm going to talk into my mic a little bit just to be sure that the sound is capturing okay um we are going to talk about four subjects and it will be uh in this order the first order the first question is going to be what was the most surprising story or development that came across your computer recently so I think we'll start with the same order that we did the introduction. So DM, you go ahead and take that. So tell us, please, what's <laughs> been the most surprising story for you lately? Well, the, for me, the most surprising development probably crept up on me, and I'm still not sure what to make of it. So, um, well, maybe I'll change my answer on the fly, actually. I'm going to change my answer on the fly. Okay. There's one that's a little bit more surprising, mm. um, and that was the Fidelity announcement. You know, we knew about BACT. We knew about the DX exchange. Um, we knew about SBI, all these institutional solutions that were coming online that we were all waiting for. Mm. I don't know of anybody except for like a day before somebody leaked it that something big was happening with Fidelity. I didn't know about that at all, and so... Uh, I'm just on Twitter one day, and I see there's a live stream happening, uh, you know, with Fidelity announcing an institutional solution that's not coming online a year from now. It's coming online a month from now. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole community just went, holy crap, like, where did this come from? So yeah. for people that don't understand why that's so significant, we've been waiting for months and talking for months about institutional solutions so that big institutions that deal with retirement accounts and hedge funds can start investing in cryptocurrency. And for a variety of reasons, they couldn't up until this point. And now in the next couple months, there's going to be solutions for them that they can start investing in it. So that was probably it. The Fidelity announcement really shocked me and, uh, you know, I think is a major shot in the arm for the whole space, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Great answer. Okay. How about you, Jungle? Well, the way I normally operate is I see what DM says during the day, <laughs> and I take that and try to mold it into my own thing. So if I was going by that, it would be Fidelity, and then I would just say and Coinbase custody coming online. Mm -hmm. But I think really what it is is it's just the development we've seen with XRapid coming live from everything from multi-hop, to uh, the convergence of the systems, mm. just how we are now in a totally different reality. It's mm. no longer just thoughts. It's no longer theory. Uh, we're living, I think, in a whole new world here, and it is exciting. It leaves me confused where we're going in the short term, but long term, <laughs> you got to love it because this is, this is something real, and it's something totally new, I think, for us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, you said it great. Thanks. Tony, how about, how about for you? 
Well, DM and Jungle stole my my lines here. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no, but I, I think I'm in total agreement with both of them. Um, definitely the Fidelity news is huge in TD Ameritrade. I think that in itself, just the brand recognition, gives us so much credibility to the crypto market as a whole. And I think we're in new waters. But as far as, you know, um, things that just going off the cuff here, I just read an article about Ripple poaching uh, a uh, Google employee. The Google employee, right. Yeah, and, and uh, Ripple's been really great at accruing talent, and they're just getting to A-plus people. Um, but th it's the background of this guy where he's developed a – or he had a startup where it was transitioning to a new technology from SMS to RCS, mm. and that is why Google went ahead and bought that startup, and he was there since 2015. And, of course, Ripple has him now. So it just got me thinking, and once again, this is pure speculation, but what is next given the coil and an XRP tip bot? Can we send XRP via text message and in that way? Mm. Um, as someone would tip you on Twitter and that goes into your account or whatever it is. Seems like a natural I thought that was fit. interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, wow. wow. Great answers. The, answer. the one answer, the one ooh, I'm getting a little feedback. I'm not sure why. Um, the one answer I had thought of is the new regulation uh, that was changed by China and they have now changed their opinion and they have deemed cryptocurrency as a valuable property and I think this is the beginning of China maybe revisiting the cryptocurrency space which would be huge for the entire mm -hmm. ecosphere yeah so I think this um, recent news is very interesting and it'll be good to watch. Okay, so the next question, um, I'm going to start with you, Tony, so that in case they steal your thunder, okay? <laughs> uh, on on an average basis, or, or give us some detail, how much time do you spend researching? Um, probably more than I should, and my wife would, would, would uh, probably say all my time, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I spend definitely, you know, before my downtime at lunch at work or whatever it may be, I would be reading something else in the tech space or, I don't know, watching random videos on YouTube or something. Uh, but now I spend that time actually trying to learn more about blockchain technology, what are new projects on the, on the line, what is, you know, companies like Ripple doing and, and trying to read between the lines. So I would say definitely spend a few hours a day. <clears throat> uh, definitely researching and trying to see what's happening and um, sometimes you get to read between the lines because the moves that are being made by, by some of the uh, whales and the big money uh, is very interesting and uh, it doesn't make the big headlines but you know you can catch something and, and, and I could tell what's what's to come yeah you're a good researcher I I know how much time it takes and I can tell you're you're uh, putting a lot of time in how about jungle how about what are you doing well it's way more than I should, but it's not always researching. I'm just so like, I'll try to put the phone to the side and not look at it. And it, whether it's Twitter, YouTube, articles popping up, people DMing me stuff, it's just constantly all day. Now, actually sitting down to do a video, I might spend a good 30 or 45 minutes reading through stuff that I've collected throughout the day and, and trying to get a, a theme or an idea. But it's really constant. It's all day long. It doesn't really end. And uh, Mrs. Jungle Link, definitely gets after me for that you know you got to make time for family and stuff but uh it's definitely and sometimes it's just might be some twitter feud i get pulled into or something like that so <laughs> it's again it's, it's hard to actually add it up but it's pretty much constant and it's an obsession of mine for sure yeah i think this space does lend itself to a little bit of obsession how about you dm um obsession a good word but i but i try to control it so i have a lot of things going on just practical stuff going on that i can't get around i mean i've got a business to run i've got two young boys who the second i walk in the house they're all over me um I, you know i can't just i you know just do xrp all the time so i have to make time for it and so i'll get up early out in my truck during the work day when i'm in between estimates i'll pull over to the side of the road and make a video um but it's it's a constant running thing in my mind, and you know, 
I've mentioned, and I'm sorry there's a lady in the room, but I've mentioned when I'm in the bathroom, I'm researching like crazy on Twitter to find out what's going on. And then, uh, you know, so it's, that's how it is for me. I mean, I'm fitting it in here and there wherever I can fit it in, but it's a constant running thing in my head that sort of, you know, I have to purposefully make it stop at times and walk away. Um, and I know sort of I can feel when it's getting to be too much. Um, the truth is, you know, I made a video recently and I talked a little bit about it. We get so into it that we're watching price action between 45 and 46 cents. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I, come on. I mean, I said in my video, like, come on, we have to have better things to do than this. Than watch like, oh, my God, it's holding at 46 cents for the last 10 minutes. Like, that's a little bit too much, probably. So we could probably all take a step back, probably. from. Uh, but it's hard when you feel like you're winning the lottery in slow motion. Mm -hmm. It's hard to walk away because you're always wondering what's going to be the catalyst. What's going what's gonna to kick it off here where we're going to take off? And you don't want to miss that moment. And so that's probably why we stay the way we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're so right when we are um, constantly 24 hours a day getting hit with new news and breaking news and significant news all the time I find myself just about ready to make a video and then something else breaks <laughs> and then I chase that and that takes you down into maybe one or two hours and you just sometimes are you have to just okay draw the line in the sand I'm gonna do it from here and that's just the way it's going to be, you know. So, yeah, the news is unbelievable. And one thing, Eddie, you know, go ahead. Well, what you had brought up about, you know, following the price movements, I had done a video uh, earlier in the year that the bulls were loose, the market was running, you know, and I think we had crossed 30 cents. We were like 31, 32 cents. So, you know, sometimes you can read too much into stuff, get too excited. But it really is. Every day there's something going on. And I don't think it was like that for like people like Hodor. And I, I don't know how long you guys have been in it. But uh, I think back in the day, you'd be struggling to find any news throughout a given month. And now it's just every single day piles on top of each other. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember uh, getting in late 2016. And <clears throat> it was not news like this, man. It was, uh, it was like, it was nothing. So it was just holding as, as long as you can. Tony, is that part of the collective? Uh, is that part of the collective um, confidence that you have in XRP? Is because so I didn't get into crypto even until 2017. Actually, I was staying away from it because I heard such bad things about it. But you've been in it. You have a, a longer perspective than me. Is that part of your collective confidence in it? Is how much it's changed over those last couple years? Oh yeah, for sure. And and. How I got into market, a friend told me about it. And I ignored him like the first few times, and then he made a lot of money off of Ethereum. And uh, uh, you know, I actually, when he told me about it, I bought some. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll buy some and hold it. I don't know, whatever. And I didn't pay attention. And then he actually cashed out some of his Ethereum because he got in very early and made a, a significant amount of money. And then I was like, wow, okay, now I'm really gonna pay attention to this. Um, and then I started loading my bags up. Um, so yeah, I mean, being being in it since then, with, with but you know, seeing some price action, but nothing until you know December twenty seventeen. Of course, um, that was a significant move. But yeah, that's kind of I kind of knew someone who made money off of it, so that was kind of what my anchor. Like, okay, I know there's money to be made here. But as I started learning more about it, and like for example, what Ripple's doing, it's like wow, okay, this is revolutionary. This is world changing. It's a uh, disruptor, and and that's where you know. It gave me more confidence to hold. Yeah, it's good. Good. Well, I'm well, happy I'm that we have so much to cover, cover, actually, in this space. That makes it um, very fun. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the third question, which is, what gives you pause in this space? So it doesn't necessarily mean what you worry about, but what makes you sit back and say, hmm, wow. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, DM Logic. You're you're up first. Um, I'll say the thing that gives me pause, and I and I pause myself often, as you might be able to tell from my videos, is it's easy to get caught up in hype 
in regard to investments because clearly you want a particular outcome and you couldn't want it any more than you want it. Like you really, really want a particular outcome. And it's hard to remain logical when your emotions are so tied to a particular outcome. Somebody was saying, I think it was the ripening, the ripening, the ripening, I guess his name is on Twitter, was saying that uh, he was wondering this morning or yesterday morning, uh, maybe he's just been fooled by this whole XRP thing. Maybe it's just a group that he's involved with on Twitter and YouTube who are so into this thing that they've sucked him into believing that it's something big as well. And maybe his, it's really, maybe he's being tricked, you know. He started to worry about that. And I experienced that on a regular basis. Not, that, not to that extent, but I just, that, that little thing that's in me, the contrarian in me, always trips at regular you know intervals it seems when i'm into something that says okay hold on hold on are you getting too far down this path here take a step back reassess where you're at here's the good thing and the amazing thing every time that little thing has been tripped and i've taken the step back to reassess my my suspicions about xrp and ripple the company have been reconfirmed I, I understand once again when I take a step back and look at the big view, I go, oh yeah, that's right. They are actually changing the whole world in terms of global finance. I've never yet um, continued down that path when I've looked at it. So that's my big hmm moment that I hit on a regular basis and you need to as an investor because it's a great way to lose money if you don't have that going off in your head because um, you'll just believe whatever comes along. And I don't want to be there. You know, I don't want that to happen. So. Yeah, that's that's great. Great insight. Uh, jungle. For me, I pause to question: Are we as close to it happening, or what we think we uh, what's going to happen? Uh, how long is this really going to take to develop? When I go back and I read the people in the forums of the ri original Ripple Pay system, which was before Schwartz and Garlinghouse, before there was even XRP. You know, these people thought we're here. You know, a couple months, the system's going to really change the world, and obviously things have come light years beyond that. So uh, I think we're very close. I think this thing is going to get big really quick. But that's where I pause. How much more development, how much more time do we need before we see things run like it truly can? Mm, yeah, that's really, really great answers. Tony. Um, I was thinking the same thing. Jungle is thinking just the time, right, to to get that maturity and um, where we, a lot of the utility kicks in. Because, for example, X Rapid has launched, but we're still waiting for those three finan uh, financial institutions to to actually push that button. And it, and it takes time. There's a business aspect to this, so um, they got to do their testing, soft rollout, hard rollout, all of those things. But also, I think the manipulation kind of annoys me, and and that's sometimes I definitely have to step back and. Uh, not get annoyed by that because of uh, you know over the counter the whales buying over the counter and then selling off a bit, purchasing a bit on, on the exchanges to kind of keep the prices at a certain level. But that is what uh, causes me to pause and I'm like when is this manipulation gonna wrap up? And I know it, it, it kind of goes in line with what I just said about utility where market matures and I think with these big players getting in though I, I think it's gonna stop a lot of manipulation because there's going to be more money it's going to stabilize a bit a deeper market yep. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think everybody agrees with you there on that um two years ago it used to be the news that was driving that gave me pause because mm. it was so reactive to news and then i think there went through a time because i'm in japan where I would always kind of be waiting for the next hack to occur because that was always <laughs> such a huge, um, had a such huge impact. But the recent hack on Zyf really had little effect on the market. And the news doesn't seem to have that much effect at all anymore, um, like it used to. Um, so what gives me pause now is the amount of globalness we have in this space. I mean, I have subscribers that are reaching every corner of the world 
I have one from Granada, Africa, and then I've got a woman, you know, up north in Ireland, and then of course somebody in Uzbekistan, and I think, oh my gosh, this is just really a phenomenon that is reaching every corner of the planet, and that always gives me great pause. Yeah. When you think of that, actually, also, Eddie, that, that um, as widespread as it is, it's currently such a thin layer that's extremely widespread. Can you imagine that thin layer covering the whole Earth deepening when this thing really takes off and, and how quickly a ton of people can get involved into this space? And like DAI always talks about, the on-ramps for getting involved are so much easier now than they were in the past. And so this is that's also one of the things that gives me pause is, my goodness, when this thing starts, you know, I've talked for a long time about, you know, relax, take it easy. This thing's a slow build, think three, five years. I could also see it just like going very quickly and surprising us at some point because of that, because it's so ubiquitous, so thin, but the second it starts moving deep, that's exponential growth very quickly. So that's very exciting as well. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be really fun to see the space mature. It will. Okay. Then yeah, we saw, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go, ahead Eric. go, Tony, go. I was going to say, just over the past year, we've seen so many exchanges pop up. I mean, almost every country with different pairings. And that's a good sign. That's, like you're saying, the on-ramps. Um, it's going to make it so much easier. And, and, of course, what we saw happen in the last bull run where so many exchanges had to close their doors and, and registration. I don't think that's going to happen this time around, which is good for us, who are the early adopters. So uh, definitely, definitely some good stuff happening. Yeah. I just want to let everybody know that um, Sam – you know, he was invited to join, but he's um, driving in his car, and he can't do it at this moment, but we'll probably be able to um, uh, have Sam join us at another time. Okay. So, Tony, or actually, Jungle Inc., I'm going to start with you because you're in the middle there. This is the last question, which is, if you could share a meal with anyone in the crypto space, who would that be with and why? That's a really tough one. I would think maybe Satoshi or David Schwartz or something like that, but I'm going to have to go with Bearable Guy. I want to know, what is he getting at with all these riddles? Why can't he just, or not riddles, but, you know, puzzles? And why can't he just come out and tell us and what's really the master plan here? Because he's sure got a lot of fans, and I would just want to know who he is. So I'm going to sit, I want to uh, have lunch with Bearable Guy for sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Tony, I'm going to jump over to you. I'm going to say definitely David Schwartz. This guy is a freaking genius. And I, I <laughs> brain. And, and just one comment, he, you know, he has such a long history of commenting on Reddit and, and, and different forums and Twitter. And he said, I don't want to miss the next Ethereum. And then he has a patent, um, something similar to blockchain. I don't know what it is from 1990 or something. So I, I would love to pick his brain. Yeah, you know, he has a lot of patience because he's spending a lot of time answering people on Twitter that, gosh, they should feel so lucky to have him respond. And I think, wow, he has, a, he has an incredible level of patience in the amount of questions he answers on Twitter. It's yeah, amazing. I, I saw DM ch chatting with him the other day. And I probably sent him a good couple thousand messages and haven't got a response yet, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, I'm jumping over to you, DM. Um, I'll, I'll, so, Bearable Guy was obviously the best answer. Jungle Inc. wins this round, but but uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to get, there's two, well, no, I'll st I'll st I'm tempted to say Robert Lee because he'd pay for lunch, but but I'll say I'll say instead actually Rob Art. If you guys I don't know if you know Rob Art, but he's the international arms dealer in Moscow. <laughs> Who just he seems like such an interesting guy. I swear I think we'd be best friends if we lived near each other. 
Um, and uh, he's somebody that I've lunch hour, right? On the on the beach yeah. from a park. Oh yeah, yeah, right, exactly. It'd be like a bagged a bagged lunch on a on a bench, yeah, or in my van. I mean, one of the two. So, but um, he just seems like the kind of guy I could talk to for hours, go out, have a beer with, hang out with, just to you know for friendship almost more than uh, more than talking about XRP or Ripple. So I hope Rob Art appreciates that. You know, I think I heard about Rob Art from Oz Crypto. He's a huge fan of Rob Art. There's so many people out there. You know, yeah. it's hard to keep that. And uh, Rob actually reached out to me when my uh, channel got taken down to give yeah. me support. Nice guy, and uh, I was glad that Oz gave me his uh, you know, information so I got to find his channel. Yeah. Yeah. And just so the audience knows, too, is that um, – Oz was invited to this group, and so was CKJ. CKJ had a communication problem, and and Oz is actually um, working. So uh, yeah, just just so everybody knows that it was really trying to be an inclusive aspect, and not um, yeah the opposite. Okay, so uh, on his <laughs> last question, I of course Satoshi Nakamoto would have been. Um, I think everybody the name passed through their brain but I want to have a, a Zen meal which is pickled radish whole grain rice and miso soup with the largest whale out there <laughs> I want to That's know a... what this whale is thinking uh, are, are you saying Satoshi? Is that who? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Jamie Diamond of uh from JP Morgan. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do we actually know who, huh? the, who the largest whale is? Is it information that we know? There, there's like a, a Twitter handle uh, called Whale Watch where they look at you know the moves being made, but you can't really trace it back to anyone. Um, you know, it's not like the XRP ledger where you can see like where the funds came from, except for if it's like a you know an account on a ledger nano or something like that yeah. now how does anyone have a stack as big as satoshi has because he's close to what a million bitcoins or something uh, like that i think his is the largest yeah i always think you know what this guy is not phased by money i mean he hasn't moved anything out of that original account maybe at other small ones that he's cashed in for you know some profits but you know things don't go the way everyone assumes it's never going to come out of that account i wonder if things go the way he doesn't like if he would uh start moving stuff around to possibly uh you know crash the market or something like that well, that might be just one of those things that give you pause <laughs> <laughs> well i think we um will just wrap it up i'm gonna though allow everyone to make just kind of a final wrap-up statement uh dm logic i'll start with you and start going, yeah start, start with, with tony, tony so i can have more time to think of my answer all right all right all right so <laughs> You got, you got put in the number one position. Go ahead. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, uh, wrap up statement. Um, well, you can tell. You can. You can talk about anything you want. Well, I mean, I think I would encourage people to just keep holding and um, not invest with their emotions. I, you know, and I'm speaking from just experience. I learned my lesson, and uh, that type of thing. Looking at prices early in the morning and at night, and it'll just drive you nuts. And um, you just want to hold and leave it as though, you know, if you're holding stocks or real estate, or precious metals, whatever it is, be patient um, and understand the, the principles of the market. Markets move in cycles. You got to be aware of the FUD and um, you definitely got to do your research and understand what each of these projects are doing, like, think, you know, like Ripple and, and, and so forth. Um, so, yeah, just encourage folks to keep holding, not invest with their emotions, look at the facts, approach it logically. And, um, yeah, I think uh, hopefully a bull run soon. The patience is a great advice. Great advice. All right, I'm jumping over to you, Jungle. Well, first, just thank you for having me on here. Again, I'm better hiding behind the pictures of the Warriors, but I do enjoy this. So thank you so much for that. Um, I just think that uh, we have no idea what's going to happen. But if you're in something that you believe has a true future, and we're getting evidence of that now, real progress and you just you know this crypto space is going to be something there's going to be many winners within it but if you find one that you see the path you know to success 
I, I think that's the key. And there could be other ones. XRP is the one that I've found. I know other people tell me passionately about other projects, and that's good. They've investigated that, and they're comfortable with it. Because it really is a wild ride, and you just got to kind of hold on, because if, if you can't, you're going to miss out. You know, you got to hold on there and let this thing develop, and we'll see what it's made of. And I, I really believe with XRP, it's, it's going to be massive, and the longer you hold, uh, you know, the bigger it'll be. And the other thing that makes me so confident is – all these great people here that we're talking right now on here, how smart smart you all are, and then people like David Schwartz and, you know, just all the great people we see out there, very intelligent people that are seeing the same thing and uh, have the same beliefs we do. You know, that this thing at the end of the day is, is going to mature and uh, be something great. Yeah, so true. The quality of people in this space is really high, very, very high. All right, DM. Uh, while this is not investment advice, it's going to sound an awful lot like it. <laughs> Don't get cute <laughs> with your investment. Um, there are cryptos out there that are really the kind of cryptos that, you know, day traders try to make a profit with. You should know that 95% of people day trading lose money. Um, only about 5% either skate by level or actually make anything at all. Um, and XRP is not that kind of investment. Um, Ripple is not the kind of company that you need to get cute with. Looking at the price in the morning, buying it at 45, selling it at 47 and having to pay taxes on whatever you made by doing it. It's just not that kind of investment. This is the kind of investment that for me, I'm treating as a retirement account. I'm buying it, sticking it on my Ledger Nano S, and forgetting about it as best I can in terms of price. I'm not looking to cash it out next week or next month. I'm thinking three to five years down the road. I mean, now, if it happens to hit some big price point that I'm surprised by, I might take out 10% um, because I think it's smart to scale to some degree. Um, but it's a, it's a retirement account for me, and that's what XRP is like. Other cryptos, they might be a flash in the pan, and you might be able to day trade or swing trade or something. There's no reason to get cute with XRP. Uh, and that's the main thing that I, one of the main things I try to remind people of all the time. Yeah, it's really wonderful. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, wonderful wrap up by everybody. You know, DM, I know you really were thinking about taking a little bit of a break, but my original concept was that I would drop off and you then would continue to be the leader for the next one and giving that then after you do it, giving the baton to somebody else so that we can continue to include lots of great minds in this space. So no pressure on when but mm -hmm. I'm going to say that you will be the next person to continue this kind of panel format because I really think it will evolve and it will change into something that's very useful for the community. So will you take that on for me? Yeah, no, absolutely. And thank you for uh, starting it. You were, the, you were the perfect person to start it. You're one of the most organized, I think, of any of us. And, um, you know, I really appreciate your putting it together, and I think it's a great idea to carry it on and sort of give it free reign, you know, to become what it becomes, you know. Um, so, yeah, thank you. I will absolutely do that. Yeah, it'll be fun in a year from now to see how it metamorphoses into whatever um, the community wants. That's, that's mm -hmm. how it's going to be. So thank you so much for um, carrying that on. Tony, wow, so happy you joined us, and I didn't give you a lot of warning, I'm sorry, and Jungle Inc., thank you so much, you are just so loved out there, and uh, I appreciate everybody getting together and taking time out on their Sunday evening. All right, so I'm going to say, I'm going to close it down, and everybody, we can say goodbye, so take care, sayonara for now, bye-bye.